Today, I wanna to share something with you guys that I think you might find valuable, especially if you are the type of guitar player that likes playing to drum tracks as opposed to a metronome. What's up everybody, my name is Taylor, welcome to the channel, and today I wanted to show you guys something that I'm using and that I think is like a really valuable tool, especially, you know, if you wanna practice, you know, by yourself. I personally like practicing to like an old school metronome, but a lot of people like practicing to a drum machine, which I think is really valid. I think a lot of the times, especially for beginners, it's easier to practice to a drum machine than it is to a metronome, which is where this cool Groove Loop X2 pedal comes in here. Now, I really like the Groove Loop X2 pedal, and I'm gonna show you guys how I think it's a valuable tool for practicing, but there is one big thing that I think Moore missed the boat on with this, and uh, I'll cover that towards the end of the video after I sort of explain how I'm using it. Now, you can run this pedal in stereo, meaning you can have a left and right input and a left and right output. It also has an input for an external pedal, so if you want to expand this and make the looper a little bit easier to use rather than just having these two buttons on the front, you can add an external pedal to that and it will give you more functionality. The way that we are running this is we have our signal split, so the left output is going to be the guitar DI and the right output is gonna be the drum machine. Now all the controls on the pedal are pretty self-explanatory. You have your loop volume, you have your drum volume, you have your speed, you can also adjust the tempo by tapping. You have a genre knob right here with 11 different functions and all of the genres for the drum machine are listed on the side of the pedal there. And then you have 11 different patterns per genre. Now you also have these pre-saved banks. Each bank lets you record up to 10 minutes. 10 minutes. That is a lot of time to record a loop. You have 14 different banks here. You have a yellow and a green channel. And you can see when I switch the banks by just pressing the save button, uh, you can see which banks have sound saved into them because they stay lit up with that purple light. And this is where the editor comes into play. Let's open up the editor on the computer here. It's worth mentioning here too that when the pedal is connected via USB to your computer, uh, it goes into this like editing mode and you can't actually use any of the functionality on the pedal. That took me like 15 minutes to figure out, so don't make that same mistake. Okay, so we have the editor loaded up, and you can see in Looper 1, I have a 3 minute and 58 second clip. That is actually a guitar DI. And this is why I think this is such a cool tool for practicing, because you can essentially load up your own guitar DIs and practice to your own guitar tracks, which is really, really helpful if you're in a band and you wanna be able to practice to your songs. You can load up a WAV file into the looper and also have the drum machine playback. And as far as I can tell, it automatically reads the tempo of whatever file that you load up. So basically what you do here is you click this little download button and it'll bring up the dialogue. Uh, I have already loaded up a song here. You can play this back and listen to it. And then you can hear my guitar DI right there. So now that we have this loaded up, we can actually disconnect the pedal from the computer. And you can see the lights return to normal on the pedal here. And let's listen to that and see if it worked. So you can hear we're playing back the WAV file that we had loaded up. Uh, let's play it back and adjust the speed. When the speed is set to the center here, that's gonna be the original tempo that you uploaded the song at, but you can actually increase or decrease it, which is really, really helpful if you're trying to learn a song and uh, you know it's a little bit difficult. You can just lower that speed a little bit until you get the hang of it and then gradually increase it. So let's listen back to it. <laughs> And you can hear just a little bit of a tweak on that knob makes a big difference. So now that we have that figured out, let's add the drums into it. And this is a new song that I have a really hard time playing. So I'll probably bring down the tempo a little bit and then gradually increase it and see if I can play back to it. We have the genre set to five, which is gonna be metal, which is what I do here on my channel. You guys probably know that by now. And uh, we're just gonna leave the pattern on pattern one here. <laughs> That's terrible, let's try that again. Oh, 
Okay, it goes something like that. But you can hear the guitar that I'm playing as well as the guitar that is coming out of the pedal is going into the same line, making it a little bit hard to separate. Uh, that's where this loop knob comes in handy. We can actually turn up or down that volume. Let's actually just bypass that here and uh, we'll try just playing the song back without any additional guitar. Like you can tell, I need a lot of work with that song, but I just wanted to demonstrate an application that I think this pedal is really, really useful for. Now you can still use it as a normal looper pedal, which I am terrible at, especially when it's up here and I have to hit it with my hands as opposed to down on the floor and hitting it with my feet. You could also use it just as a drum machine if you want to, which makes it pretty versatile, but I think this is the most interesting application of this pedal, and I think that makes it pretty unique and pretty valuable, and it really just makes it a nice way to practice, and you know, it's small enough you could throw it in your gig bag even. Now there's one thing that I think Moore really missed the mark on with this pedal. I think that one of the genres should have just been metronome and you know, the patterns could have just been different sounds for the metronome, like different woodblock or you know, some people like that ping or clicks or things like that. I think that they really should have had that option because I think it would make it even more usable because with the routing, you could send one of the outputs to your drummer and then he could have a click in his headphones that he could play along to. And then you could send the other output, like maybe you have your bass tracks on this or something. You could send the other output into a bass amp or a PA and you would have a bass player in a box. All right, hopefully you guys have found this video helpful. If you have, make sure to hit the like button and let me know down in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.